The meeting began with announcements and recognitions. Council thanked two longtime Parks and Recreation Commission members whose terms are coming to an end. Lee Keeling and Mike Rivera have served on the commission since 2014 and provided crucial leadership during the development of the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. We appreciate your service. Mayor Jeff Bocknight read a letter from a San Antonio resident thanking Convention and Visitors Bureau Guest Services Specialist Bridget Postel for helping him explore Victoria during a recent weekend visit. He said, she was so pleasant and helpful. She made me feel very welcome. And the communications team, hey, that's us. We were recognized for recently winning a National Savvy Award from 3CMA for our Green Ribbon Program social media coverage. There were two items with public hearings. Council approved the establishment of a downtown entertainment district, creating a set of regulations designed to promote business activity within the district. These include allowing businesses to place chairs, displays, and other items on the sidewalk. Residents will also be allowed to carry an open container of alcohol in the district if it was purchased at a business with the appropriate TABC license. All other alcohol-related laws still apply. For example, you still can't have an open container in a vehicle. The proposed ordinance drew some questions and concerns surrounding the approach to measuring sound levels. Ultimately, the approved ordinance keeps the same standards within the entertainment district that exists citywide. And council voted to remove itinerant vendor permitting requirements for special events within the downtown entertainment district as a way to further encourage large-scale events downtown. Council unanimously approved all eight consent agenda items, including a contract with Jason Inc. for irrigation, water fountains, and solar lighting at the Riverside Park Dog Park. Council took action on five additional items following discussion. Council voted to approve a variance request from developer James Weirden for the Mitchell School property. The developer wants to start using two smaller buildings at the property, which would normally require adding more on-site parking spaces in addition to the 26 that are already there. Council agreed to waive this requirement and allow the development to continue as planned. The city is planning to add markings to facilitate on-street parking around this block and the adjacent Memorial Square. Council appointed four new members to the Parks and Recreation Commission, which advises council on matters related to Parks and Recreation. Glenda Nickel, Donna Roberts, and Harley Fisk were appointed for three-year terms, and Julie Hughes was appointed to an unexpired term that ends in 2025. Council voted to allocate $50,000 to seven area nonprofits from the Child Safety Fund. These funds will be used for programs that promote children's safety and well-being. Council voted to allocate $135,000 in hotel occupancy tax funds to 17 organizations that promote local tourism by hosting events and activities that bring visitors to Victoria. And Council voted to approve contracts for next year's computer equipment purchases and software maintenance. Finally, Council heard an update from Assistant City Manager Derek Farrell on local broadband improvement efforts. The City and its partners established the Victoria Broadband Commission in 2020 to improve internet access in Victoria. The Commission's efforts have helped to attract two new broadband providers, AT&T and Sparklight, and tens of thousands of homes will be eligible for their service by the end of 2023. Between these new providers and existing providers who are expanding their services, the vast majority of residents will have at least three options available when it comes to their internet providers. Additionally, there are multiple providers working to improve connectivity outside of city limits. Meanwhile, Victoria College has developed courses to train fiber optic technicians so that providers can hire local. For more information on those courses, you can contact Victoria College's workforce and continuing education department. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the rundown from last night's city council meeting. If you were there, awesome. But if you weren't, you can always catch the meeting in full online at victoriatx.gov forward slash TV 15 on our local cable channels 15 and 115 or on our YouTube at Victoria Texas Videos. Catch us on Facebook as well. Sign up for our City View newsletter. And until next time, have a good one.